Previously on the channel, we've run through 10 mysteries in the Legend of Zelda series. Questions with no answers, the truth behind which we can only guess. Cryptic events like the alien invasion of Romani Ranch in Majora's Mask, or the inexplicable appearance of the ruins of Ocarina of Time's Castle Town being found on the Great Plateau in Breath of the Wild. These mysteries are some of the most interesting things about the games, left up to the player to theorise and speculate on. There's a playlist in the top right for the other two episodes if you've missed them. But today, alongside Hyrule Gamer, let's look at five more mysteries across the Legend of Zelda series. Characters, enemies, locations, and events which are left unexplained. If you haven't already, subscribe for more Zelda content and let's get into it. Lord Jabu Jabu's Disappearance Before Link enters the Temple of Time and pulls the Master Sword during Ocarina of Time, his quest is to gather the three spiritual stones. Sacred jewels held by the Great Deku Tree, the Gorons, and the Zora. These stones serve as keys to the Sacred Realm, allowing access to the Master Sword's chamber by opening the Door of Time, and so Ganondorf, yearning for the Triforce, blackmailed and threatened the various races of Hyrule in order to try and seize them. The Gerudo Man placed a death curse on the guardian deity of the forest, the Great Deku Tree, infecting him with parasites, though he would not yield the stone. Despite Link's purging of the parasitic Goma, the Great Deku Tree succumbed to this curse, and passed away shortly after granting Link the Kakiri Emerald, the first of the spiritual stones. Ganondorf also attempted to extort the Goron Ruby from the Gorons by blocking the entrance to Dodongo's cavern, the source of their food, with a giant boulder, though again was unsuccessful in his attempt to take the stone. Instead, Link was gifted it after blowing open the cavern and slaying the monstrous King Dodongo. And finally, Ganondorf also unsuccessfully tried to seize the Zora Sapphire putting a parasitic curse on Lord Jabu Jabu, the guardian deity of the Zora, much like the one placed on the Great Deku Tree. However, unlike the Deku Tree, when Link enters Jabu Jabu's belly and eradicates Baronade, the Great Whale is cured. He'll stay there, alive, in his lake behind Zora's domain. That is, until Link enters the Temple of Time using the Sacred Stones and the Ocarina of Time, and pulls the Master Sword from the pedestal which seals him for seven years in the Sacred Realm. During this time, Ganondorf obtains the Triforce of Power, and overthrows the royal family of Hyrule, becoming the new tyrannical ruler of the kingdom. Castletown is burned to a haunted ruin, Hyrule Field is plagued by ghosts, and Zora's domain freezes over, due to Morpha's presence in the Water Temple. Not only is Zora's domain frozen over, Lord Jabu Jabu, the deity who Link rescued years earlier, is nowhere to be seen. Large blocks of ice float in his lake, and the whale is absent, never to be seen again. Link can of course return to the past to see Lord Jabu Jabu where he's alive, but in the future he completely vanishes, and it's never explained. Zora's domain thaws out after Ganon's defeat at the end of the game, seen flowing again during the end credits, but we never see if Jabu Jabu returns to his lake. The fate of the Guardian Deity remains a mystery. Twilight Princess's Hyrule Castle serves as the game's final dungeon, a sprawling labyrinth stronghold inhabited by Darknuts, Lazalfos, Eralfos, and more. It's accessed after Midna uses the power of the Fused Shadow to shatter the barrier surrounding the castle, leading to their final showdown against the puppeteer of the game's events, Ganondorf. The first part of the dungeon is situated in the courtyard, the grounds surrounding the castle itself. Here takes place a last duel with King Bublin, who gains a respect for Link's strength, choosing to forsake Ganondorf. It's also where the dungeon map is found, in the east side of the courtyard. But Hyrule Castle's courtyard actually has a somewhat secret area, the graveyard. This area of the dungeon isn't necessary at all for completing the game, rewarding Link with an extra small key he can use to enter a room full of various treasures inside the castle. The graveyard can only be accessed by using Wolf Link to dig under a wall in the courtyard, leading to a small grove filled with trees and gravestones, populated by Stalfos. 
Other than this, the area appears to be empty. If Link uses his wolf senses here, however, he'll be met with an eerie sight. Multiple ghosts, clad in the armour of Hylian soldiers, pointing toward a spot on the ground. If Link bombs here, a gate will open, starting the solution to the area's puzzle. But one of the most interesting parts of this area are these ghosts themselves. Who are they? If they were Hylian soldiers slain during the Twilight Invasion, why do they have long red hair and such harrowing faces with soulless, empty eyes? They're nothing like any conventional ghosts we've seen before in the series, which usually appear very similar to how they were in real life. They look more similar to the Arbiter's Grand Pose than anything else, but it's clear that these spirits were once Hylian soldiers who linger on after death. These soldier spirits look very similar to beta soldier ghosts which appeared during early trailers for the game, which were later replaced by the blue-green spirits. Though, these soldiers are only trapped in spirit form due to being lost in Twilight, and by the time Link reaches Hyrule Castle, the area is free from Twilight. These soldier spirits also appear within the castle itself, not only the courtyard, but they're still unexplained. These are some of the most haunting parts of the game, simply because there's no explanation for them, no way to help them like there is with the normal spirits of soldiers trapped in twilight. These phantoms remain in the castle, nameless and unexplained. The Trident The signature weapon of the Demon King, the Trident, has appeared in the majority of the beast's 2D appearances. Originally debuting in A Link to the Past, this Dark Trident is Ganon's weapon of choice, but for the most part we haven't really got a backstory for it. However, the Trident's appearance in Four Swords Adventures, the final game in the Child timeline, is shrouded in mystery. During the end of Twilight Princess, Ganondorf, the same Gerudo thief from Ocarina of Time, finally met his demise at the hands of the Hero of Twilight, with the Master Sword buried deep within his chest. He's not sealed or imprisoned, the Triforce of Power deserts him, his eyes glaze over, and life leaves him, standing defiant to his last breath in Hyrule Field. Despite this death, a man named Ganondorf is mentioned in Four Swords Adventures, confirmed to be a reincarnation of the Gerudo King. This reincarnated Ganondorf betrays Gerudo laws, and breaks into the pyramid within the Desert of Doubt where he finds the Arcane Trident, which grants him the power to become the King of Darkness. When the Lynx enter the pyramid and reach the room in which the Trident was kept, it's missing, having been stolen earlier by Ganondorf. But the stone tablet nearby presents the mystery. It has a message written in an ancient language. Seek you the world. Seek you power. Does your soul despise peace and thirst for more? Does your soul cry for destruction and conquest? We grant you the power to ruin the world. The power of darkness. Evil spirit of magic trident, you are the king of darkness. So, who left this trident for Ganondorf in the pyramid? Who wrote an inscription, seemingly knowing at some point a reincarnation of Demise's hatred would appear to take the trident, granting them the power to ruin the world? The pyramid itself was built by the ancestors of the Zuna, a peaceful cactus-like tribe who described the structure's designers as wise, but that the pyramid is so old that no one living knows much about it. The Zuna are aware of some form of danger within the pyramid, a darkness that goes unspoken, but that's as much as we learn of its origins. Whoever placed the trident within, and wrote an inscription directed towards the reincarnation of the King of Evil, remains a mystery. Throughout the Minish Cap, Link is accompanied by Ezlo, a Picori cursed by Vati and transformed into an all too familiar green cap. Ezlo, like other Zelda companions, helps Link by offering advice, counsel, and witty remarks. If Link presses the select button, he can speak to the cab anytime, and Ezlo will remark on interesting things in the surroundings. However, in Link's bedroom, something strange happens with Ezlo. When Link enters his room for the first time with the cap, he'll say a few things like, 
So this is your room? That makes it my room too, right? And asking if Link wants to sleep. But if Link goes to the very bottom left corner of the room, below the table, Ezlo will speak up, saying, I sense something unusual here. Is it something hidden? I won't tell anyone, so come on, show me. Despite this hint towards something hidden here, there's nothing. There's no secret in this corner of the room, no way to move the table or bomb the walls, nothing. It's so strange that it's only this spot. Was something meant to be here, but taken out during development? Is it just a bug? And Ezlo's not meant to say anything here. As far as I'm aware, this is the only time Ezlo says this line in the entire game. So why? Whatever Link's hiding in this corner of the bedroom will remain a mystery. Breath of the Wild's world is full of imposing structures. Some are man-made, like the magnificent stone walls of the Great Plateau, the intricate designs of Zora's Domain, or the regal architecture of Hyrule Castle. But others are purely natural, like Death Mountain, Hebra Peak, or the trunks of gargantuan trees. But these gargantuan tree trunks aren't the only titanic remains that litter Hyrule. The wilds are also populated by gigantic skeletons, far too large to belong to anything currently living in Hyrule. These are landmarks which are easily overlooked, and our attention quickly moves on from the white spires to the Hynox sleeping in the centre, or the Sheikah Tower just atop the mountain. But if we take a second to look at these bones, we can appreciate just how colossal the creatures to which they belonged must have been. Throughout the land, a huge number of sets of bones of this size can be found, though strangely it's only ever the ribcage and spine, never any other part of the creature. They appear all over the world, from the Gerudo Desert to Death Mountain, and absolutely dwarf anything found in Hyrule, far larger than the Molduga, Hynoxen or Lynels, more akin to the size of a divine beast than anything else. But they're never explained. While the three leviathan skeletons have a small quest attached to them, these countless behemoth rib cages across the land are all ignored. So what are they? What creatures once roamed the land? So enormous in size that their remains dwarf anything living. Near Rito village we find a particularly large variation of these bones. Like with the others, all that remains of this skeleton is the ribs and spine sitting in a patch of marshland. But it's not the bones themselves that make this area stand out, it's the name. This area is known as Dragonbone Mire. A mire is another name for a bog or swamp, meaning that this name just means Dragonbone Swamp, which is its name in the Japanese version of the game. A small marsh loomed over by the ancient remains of a long dead being known as a dragon. There's also a set of equipment in the game known as Dragonbone Gear, wielded by higher level enemies like the silver or gold variants of Bokoblins or Moblins. Which beasts these Dragonbone weapons were crafted from is never explained in the game. We only know that they're referred to as dragons, and their bones are more resilient than anything else available to the Bokoblins and the Moblins. So it's possible that these weapons are crafted from these colossal skeletons, all that remains of a race of ancient dragons. So what were Breath of the Wild's dragons? There's a fantastic video covering these skeletons, and their connection to Dragonbone weaponry, in more detail by Nintendo Black Crisis, which you can check out with a link in the description or card in the top right. But even with these connections, the creatures that these skeletons belong to remain a mystery. It seems that sometime before Breath of the Wild, dragons roamed the land. Creatures so large in size that their skeletons in the present age stand like great statues, towering structures serving as reminders of the beauty and grandeur of this ancient race. Whatever led to the demise of the dragons before Breath of the Wild is unknown, just like what the race themselves were like. We're left with the evidence of a mass extinction event, but not the cause. The dragons remain trapped in Hyrule's history, the titans of the skies. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. There's a counterpart video to this over on Hyrule Gamer's channel. 
covering enemies which we think should return in Breath of the Wild's upcoming sequel, so check that out with the link in description or the card in the top right. Let me know in the comments as well if you have any unsolved Zelda mysteries you'd like to see in a video. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.